Thanks, Becky. Yeah, so my name is Mike Stenta. Um, I've been working on PharmaOS for about five or six years now. Uh, it started as kind of a side project, and um, now I'm, I'm, it's kind of one of my, it's my main focus. Uh, so I'm working with the VVBGA right now to help uh, members get set up with PharmaOS systems and to talk about how you can kind of use it for, for nutrient management planning purposes, uh, as well as just your normal record keeping. Um, so I'll give a I'll give a quick like intro to what Pharma OS, Pharma OS is in a minute. But first, I just wanted to point you to this website here, which is pharmaos.vvbga.org. If you don't already have a Pharma OS uh, system set up, you can come to this page, and there's a register link up here on the top right, and this will just ask for your farm name what you want your farm URL to be. So if you know, I'm saying Mike's farm, then the URL will automatically be mikesfarm.bbbga.org, but I could also just call it Mike or something like that. You can decide what you want. If you put in an address here, it'll, it'll drop a point on, on your farm map so you can kind of get started with the mapping and your name and email address, and you have to prove that you're not a robot too. Um, so standard stuff. This page also has some good information uh, for contact information for Becky um, and just some context about the project in general. So uh, uh, the project with VVBGA specifically, we, we work together to build a new module inside PharmaOS uh, for nutrient management, for storing your nutrient management plans so that they can be linked and within the same system as your other records, like your soil tests and your input logs and your harvest logs and plantings. So I'll show you how to do that kind of stuff. Um, and you can find more information here. So I'm just gonna jump over to this uh, testing site that we set up. Um, and I'll use this to just kind of demonstrate some of the features. So, you know, just a real quick intro to PharmOS. PharmOS is, is uh, it's a web-based, um, farm data management system, uh, basically. What, and so what that means is that it's available as a website. So you would you, you get your own URL like this, and then you go to that and you would log in with your own username and password. By default, everything in PharmOS is owned by you and it's private. So no one can see it unless they log in. But as we're, as we're developing it, we're, we're creating ways of sharing that information with others in an opt-in sort of way so that you can decide to share or give access to certain people. Um, and so I'll show some of that, but one of the use cases there is, is well, specifically with VVBGA and uh, University of Vermont Extension and Becky, is you can give Becky access to your PharmOS so that she can come in and look at your plan and see, uh, see the other records related to it and that kind of stuff. You can also use it with um, organic certification. So if you've got a certifying agent, you can give them a login to your PharmOS, which then allows them to view your records from, uh, from afar, or, you know, from wherever they are. Um, and it really depends on the certifying agent. I've, I've talked with a few and some, some are okay with that. Others, you know, have their own very specific process and they want to come out to the farm and see your records there too. So, uh, so that kind of depends on, on the context. Um, so the the one thing that you you know you may have seen other you may have used or seen other uh, farm management systems before um, the one thing that kind of sets farm OS apart from those is that it's an it's an open source uh, community built software so what that means is that all of the code that runs farm You can make changes to it. You can contribute those changes back to the project. And we've got a large community already developing around this software of farmers, developers, and researchers who are helping to kind of push it forward and build new features on top of it. <clears throat> so one of the big priorities is data ownership and, and, and you know, user freedom so that you have the freedom to, to make those kind of decisions and you're not just at the whim of some large company or organization. So you can find out more information about FarmOS and, and you know, all that kind of stuff on farmos.org. There's also a really great user guide here, which uh, covers a lot, of, uh, a lot of topics. We're gonna be going over a couple of stuff today. We're gonna try to keep the webinar 
not too long so that you're not overwhelmed, but um, you know, there's plenty more you can dig into. Uh, and there's lots of other videos and stuff out there. There's this, Becky and I recorded this um, other 15 minute video just on mapping in PharmaOS, which is available on YouTube if you search for mapping in PharmaOS. <clears throat> and there's a couple of other others out there. We have a couple of other webinar recordings too. So on this one, I'm going to be going through the nutrient management module specifically, and then also some other relevant PharmaOS features like seedings and transplantings and harvests and mapping and, uh, and things like that. But throughout the whole thing, you know, feel free to, to jump in and ask questions. This is kind of a, um, you know, it's, uh, we've got a good, we've got a good 14 participants on right now. So, you know, we ask that everyone stays muted unless you're asking a question, but if you've got a question, feel free to chime in. Or if you prefer, you, there's also a chat feature. So if you want to open up the chat and post your question there, then uh, Becky will see that and she can, she can chime in and interrupt me. So without further ado, I'll jump in and start showing some, some things in PharmOS. So once you set up your first PharmOS system, what you'll get is an email with a link that will log you into the system. So once you get in, you'll see something like this. You'll see a dashboard <clears throat> with a map on the right and, uh, and your sort of tasks on the left. It'll all be empty because you'll be starting with a clean slate, but that's kind of the basic structure. Then what you could do is you can come up to my account here and, and change your password by clicking edit. Um, so you can, you can set your new password so that it's something that you remember. The other nice thing <clears throat> about this that I mentioned just a moment ago too, is that you can add people to your farm too. So you can, uh, um, create logins for, for other workers or other managers on the farm. And you can give them different roles that allow them different access, uh, access to things. So I'll just touch on that real quick. The farm viewer role you can assign to uh, a login and that allows them to come in and see things, but they can't edit anything and they can't change or delete anything. So that's a good, a good use for uh, organic certification or if you just wanna share the system with, with someone else. The farm manager role is kind of the higher level role that gives you access to everything as well as some configuration. Uh, and then there's also a farm worker role, which is uh, also gives you access to most things, um, just not the configuration stuff. So um, in PharmOS, the nutrient management dashboard is available as a tab right here. So while when you're on your main dashboard here, which you can get to at any time by clicking the PharmOS icon up in the top here. You'll see there's a couple of tabs uh, right here under the menu. Dashboard is where we are now. Nutrient management is the, this is the new module that we created with the VVBGA. So in here, this kind of guides you into the process of uh, keeping your nutrient management records with PharmOS. Um, and we've got We've got some other documentation available on farmos.org here. Um, not a whole lot, mostly just uh, some high level information. But this page here should be pretty intuitive and, and guide you into the process. And the main three things that, that uh, you should be tracking for your nutrient management are your soil tests so that you can see you know, where you're starting from or what the current status of things is your nutrient management plans. So this would be you know, what you're planning on doing and that involves figuring out uh, what your nutrient needs are based on your soil tests and then coming up with um, a set of activities records. So this is where you would come to, to actually record when you add an amendment to your soil. So in the soil test, you can add a new soil test record here, or you can view all your soil test records. In the nutrient management plans, um, well, I'll jump into this one in a, in a second. Uh, and then in the amendment records, you can click here to record an amendment or view all the previous ones too. So to just show you what that looks like, if I come up here and click view all soil test records, we can see, okay, great. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five soil tests. Most of this is just test uh, just uh, demo um, content in here now. So, uh, you know, it might not be actual stuff, but you can see that uh, Becky uploaded some soil tests. They can be um, 
associated with a certain field. So let me just go through the process real quick and add a soil test and show you what that looks like. So I'll click the green add a soil test button. And this is pretty simple. So the, you know, the first step is you just give it a name. So maybe I'll just say this is the 2019 um, South Field uh, Soil Test. You can put in the date for when you actually took the sample of the soil test. So I'll just leave that alone. Um, you can put in the laboratory. So maybe I'll say Cornell for this one. And any other notes you want, maybe, you know, about what the conditions were or what any other information you want to leave with with regard to that. Over here, you can put in your location. So you can, you can say, okay, this is gonna be coming from Blueberry Field. Um, and you can also put in the specific coordinates of the soil test if you want. So I can come into this map and say, okay, here's the points that I sampled from. Now you don't have to do this. This is, you know, if you, if you wanna get really granular with, with your records, it can be helpful because in the future, if you're taking multiple soil tests from the same field, sometimes you, you wanna mix up where your points are coming from and it's helpful to, to see where, where you did it in the past. The other nice thing about these maps, and I'll go into the mapping a little bit more in a moment, uh, but you can turn on this NRCS soil survey layer over on the right here. And this will just overlay the uh, NRCS soil survey map on your farm map. So you can kind of see where the breakdown of different soil types is on your farm. And by itself, you know, these little labels don't, aren't very helpful. Like, I don't know what VGB means, um, but you can either look that up on the NRCS website or use, using this map tool, we can look it up right here. So because I've laid these points down on the map, I can then come down here to this soil names field and click look up soil name. Asking it where or what, tell me about this soil that these points are in. And then it spits back this. So it is uh, Virginis clay, two to 6% slope. And here's the two different soil codes that are used to, to represent that. So then what I can do is, um, I can save this right now and I'm gonna mark this as not done. So I'm gonna save this log. So now I've got my, this is my soil test record that I'm putting in here. It's marked as not done. And the reason I'm doing that is like, I haven't sent it in for the results yet. So I've, I've created a record, but I've got my soil in my hand. Now I'm gonna bring that to the lab or mail it to the lab, wait for the test results to get back. And then once they do come back, I can come back into here and I can attach them to this record. So I can come back and click edit and then come to this files tab on the left and uh, find a file via, um, via uh, my browser and upload it to the, to the test. And then I can mark this as done so that I've got it in the future to look back on. So let me jump back to the soil tests and just show you what that looks like. Here's an example of a soil test file in a PDF. So what's nice about this is while I'm out in the field, I can bring this up on my phone and just open the soil test up right on my phone. So if I'm, if I want to, if I want to look at, or if I'm considering adding lime to some fields and I want to quickly load up what my last pH level was, I can do that pretty quickly. The whole idea behind FarmOS is to kind of give you a place to put everything. It doesn't, it, it gives you a lot of freedom within that though too. So it's, it's up to you how, how much detail you want to put into it. And I think, you know, in my experience, over time, you kind of figure out what makes sense for you in terms of how much you want to put in, because you'll start to, you'll start to look back at things with it. And as you look back at things, it'll become more obvious like, oh, you know, I really wish I recorded this piece of information or that piece of information. So everyone's different in what, in what is useful to them and, and what, um, how they'll use this system. Uh, but for the nutrient management one, we're, we're basically asking that you record your soil tests, uh, your nutrient management plans, and your amendment records. So those are the three main pieces. Now with the nutrient management plans, the the module that we created right now is sort of a step one the step two is gonna 
add a lot more features to that. Uh, but the, for this step one, it's mainly just a place to, to store your plan. So the module itself doesn't really walk you through the planning process. That can still happen outside of FormOS in whatever, in whatever process you're currently using for that. And then all you have to do is, is uh, upload your plan into FormOS. So as part of uh, the VVBGA and UVM extension, we have a planning worksheet that you can use, which is a, um, an Excel sheet. So you can just download this to your computer and this will help in, um, this may even look familiar to a lot of you. Uh, I'm opening this up in a program called LibreOffice, which is the same thing as, um, as Microsoft Excel. So if you have Excel, then you can open it. Uh, so this, maybe I'll, uh, Becky, do you want to speak to this real quick and then we can jump back to FormOS? Yeah, thanks, Mike. I mean, I think um, you made it pretty clear what we're doing in this planning section, but um, this is a very preliminary step. Like, we just wanted to get the architecture up and live where you could store your plans and really using any format that already works for you is fine and wonderful. So you can even take a picture of what you've written down on the back of an envelope and upload it here, or you can use our template or upload whatever Excel sheet you're already using. Um, ultimately, if we like, you know, in all of us, I mean, we, the VVBGA members, like FarmOS, we're going to invest in a more sophisticated um, structure for this where you can, if you chose to, load directly onto the website your plans. But for now, this is just simply a repository, as Mike said, for your planning worksheet. So I also wanted to say, if you guys have questions as we're going, please um, either speak up or put something in the chat room. Um, but also know that Mike is like very responsive and available if you have follow-up questions after this, so. Yeah, thanks, Becky. And I actually just realized I was, I was, I had the spreadsheet open and I was showing it, but it, that's not showing up on my screen share. So sorry about that. It's only showing my browser window. Um, but you can download this yourself uh, through your form OS and, and see what it looks like. So the next step after that is you would you would fill that out in your spreadsheet or whatever process, like Becky said, whatever process you currently use. But then what you would do is create a new management plan record in here that you could then upload those to. So if I click that link, you'll see this is very similar to adding a soil test. I would I would say, okay, this is my 2019 uh, nutrient plan. Or, you know, if you've got a lot of, if you've got multiple plans, maybe you say this is my 2019 South Field plan. Um, so it's really up to you how you, how you structure it yourself. Uh, this gives you that kind of flexibility. And you can put in what the date range is for that if you want. So you can say that this is going to be effective. My plan is for, you know, March 15th until November, we'll say. Um, you can optionally say what season it's a part of if you want to. So there's a lot of features in FarmOS. I'm not going to go into everything right now, but um, uh, it provides a lot of ways to, to kind of organize your, your records. You can also specifically say what fields are this plan is a part of and link, the, link to them in here. So I can say, okay, this is part of field A and field B, perhaps. And then lastly, this is the file upload. So this is where you would upload any files that are related to your plan. So this is just a place to store those kind of things, both so that you have them archived, but also so that you can share them with other people like Becky. So I'm just gonna go, I, what I'll actually do is just upload the, the worksheet template that I downloaded before. Um, yep, so that's the one and I'm just gonna upload that. So now that appears right here and I can, I can download it again from there. Some people also use uh, Google Docs rather than um, files. So if, if you're doing that, what you can do is just come down here and paste the link into the notes field so that you can get back to it easily that way too. The nice thing about Google Docs or something like that is uh, you can be updating that um, without having to re-upload the file every time you make a change. So, you know, if you have your own workflow, you can decide how you want to do that. But then once I click save, now that's saved as one of my nutrient management plans. And you can kind of see that in the hierarchy up here. Got farm, plans, nutrient management plans, 
2019 South Field Nutrient Plan. And I can get back to that on the main menu up here under plans. So there's the main menu, plans, nutrient management plans. And this shows all of the nutrient management plans that you want to have in your system or that you want to keep track of. So you might have multiple. You can also archive them so that as the years go on, you, um, you might only want to have the current ones visible in here, but you can archive your old ones so that you can get back to them again in the future. Uh, so that's kind of how the nutrient management plans work. So now let me just jump back to the dashboard and go back to nutrient management and open up this amendment records field. So the last part is, you know, once you've got your soil tests and you've got your plan, then you need to keep track of what you actually did throughout the season. So we've got this uh, link here, record an amendment to your soil. And what this is, is a, is a form that is a, just a one page form that you can use to, to describe amendments that you've made to your soil. So it asks for information about what area you, uh, you did this to. So as you type, it'll show it will uh, pull in. Um, okay, that one doesn't have one. Let me, let me find one that, that we have mapped already. Let's try blueberry field. Uh, nope, let's see. I, I should have looked at this ahead of time. Uh, well, I don't really need to go into it, but the basically if you have your areas mapped, it'll automatically pull in what the size is. So it, it'll say, you know, 1.2 acres down here. Or you can type it in manually if you don't have them mapped. So I'll just do that for now. Then you can put in your, your amendment information. So you could say compost. And if you have the information about the nutrient analysis, the N, P, and K percentages, you can put those in. So I'll just say 5.5. Uh, you can also put in source and manufacturer, so I can say Vermont compost. And if you do put that in, you then get new fields for the lot number and the date of purchase, which is sometimes required for produce safety uh, regulations. Then going down, you've got, uh, you can put in information about how you applied, uh, how you applied this amendment, whether it be a broadcast, side dress, foliar, or other. Uh, and whether you did it by weight or by volume and add the, you can put in the total quantity and calculate what the rate of application was. And then finally, just any notes about, about this application. So you can put in your field condition or crops that are currently in the field or other notes. And what this will ultimately do is create an input log. So that'll appear up here later under your logs and inputs. And once I'm done with this, I'll give you a, an overview of the top level menu to just to get into it. Uh, but this fourth, we had a soil amendment of 50 pounds uh, soybean meal. And November 15th, we had one tons of compost. And August 6th, uh, 1200 pounds of soy into this field. And what's nice about this is that you've got the quantities broken out here. They're also directly linked to these areas. So now if I wanted to see everything that's happened to blueberry field, I can just click on blueberry field. And now in here, I can see, I can see other records associated with blueberry field. So here's that input that I just clicked uh, on from the other list, but I can also see, oh look, we've got a soil test. Uh, and this is the one that I just added a little while ago. So you can really start to develop a, uh, a database of, of records for your farm all within this same system. So now let me just take a quick step back uh, and give a high level overview of the types of records in FarmOS. Um, and then maybe what we can do is uh, I'll show some mapping stuff, but we can also see what questions people have before I get into anything deeper. So FarmOS essentially breaks up the records into uh, five categories and those are up here on the top you have your areas and if i click on that what we'll see is um, a list of all the areas on your farm so this would include fields uh, it would include beds buildings um, so here we can see the list of fields here 
Uh, and, and they can be arranged hierarchically too. So you can say these beds are within this field, are within this property and, and so on and so forth. So you can really, um, you know, decide how, how you want to structure things. This is kind of a simple demo site, so we don't have a lot of structure to it right now, but you can imagine the possibilities. Um, in your maps, you can toggle different types on and off. So yellow are fields. So if I toggle those on and off, you can see those disappear and reappear. Um, you can also in any map turn on your soil survey layer if you want. Uh, and right now I think we only really have fields in here. Um, oh no, there's some beds. So if you zoom in a little bit further, you can see that this, this field was actually broken up into a whole bunch of beds. So now I can actually click on each one of those beds and, and see what the calculated area and square footage is. And I can click through to each one to see what records happen to that specific bed, uh, which means you can get very granular with this if you want to. You don't have to, but it's, uh, it can be helpful, um, especially if you're dealing with a, a lot, if you're a small diversified operation. Things would include plantings. Those would be the things that you actually have planted in the field or in the greenhouse. Uh, animals are an example of assets. Equipment, so you can put in all of your equipment, um, your rototiller, your, uh, if you have a tractor, um, whatever, whatever you wanna be able to track, you can put in here. Um, so let's jump over to plantings just to show what that looks like. So plantings would be things like, here is my 2018 carrot planting. And it, it is, the proper variety is carrot, and it is located in field C. So then what's nice about this is I can then come to this record, 2018 carrot. Uh, so to do your plantings, we just created this new quick form called the planting quick form. And this allows you to, to quickly just add information about the plantings that you're, that you're either planning ahead for or that, you're, um, that you've already done. So the, the, key, the key thing I will mention right now is that PharmOS does not do calculations for you for planning your plantings. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't have the same kind of capabilities that maybe uh, your custom spreadsheet does that uh, will tell you how much you need of something or, or how much seed to buy. That's what we're gonna work towards. But for now, it does provide a place to put the information that you did when you did do something, you can put it in here so that it's archived and can be related to other activities in your system. So we've got a quick form that you can get to from the dashboard under quick forms, and it's the planting quick form. And this allows you to just quickly say, I, I planted, I seeded and or transplanted and or harvested uh, this, uh, this crop. So this is, Pretty straightforward. You start by, by saying what season it is, and you can just leave this set to the default, which will just be the, the current year. Um, or it'll default to whatever you put in before. Uh, you can optionally say that this is a mix of multiple crops or varieties, but I think for most, in, in most people's cases, you're just gonna leave this set to one because it's just gonna be a planting of a single variety. Um, the mixes are more for like pasture seeding and, and other use cases, but for diversified vegetable operations, usually you're seeding, a, you know, a bunch of flats of one crop. So for this, I'm just going to say uh, for crop or variety, I'll say broccoli. And you could put in more information too. So you could, you know, put in the variety name after that if you want, but I'm just going to leave that simple. Then down here, if we... Um, just uncheck that for a second. It gives you the option of also defining your seeding, your transplanting, and your harvest information for that. So this can either be done in advance or after the fact. So maybe you use, maybe you currently have a spreadsheet that helps you calculate how much of things you, you want to put in. That spreadsheet doesn't necessarily keep track of whether or not you actually did do that. So maybe your process is you use a spreadsheet to figure out what you're going to do, but then when you actually do something, you come in here and you say, okay, I seeded this on March 15th and I seeded it into the greenhouse and I seeded this quantity. 
So these are all optional, but um, I'll leave quantity. Well, no, I'll put it in for now. So let's say we did a count of uh, 12, uh, 12 flats, I'll just say. So this is pretty free form. You can put in whatever you want. And I'll check off the completed box because we, we did do it, we'll say. You can also at the same time plan ahead for your transplanting. So you can say add transplanting and we'll do that, uh, we'll just say a month from now. So let me say April and that will go out to the field. So I'll say this is gonna go to field A and I'll leave quantity out for now because that doesn't really matter right now. This is not completed yet, so that'll be in the future. And I'm not gonna create a harvest yet. I'll come back and do that later. So then what this is gonna create is a new planting for me, and it's gonna create two logs. It's gonna create a seeding log and a transplanting log. So let's just do that, and then I'll show you what that means. So I, I saved that, and now it says created planting, 2019 field A broccoli. Also log created, seed, 2019 field broccoli, and transplant, 2019 field A broccoli. So again, the asset is the thing, and the logs are the activities. So if I click on the planting now, I can see I've got, so this is my planting and I've got a seeding scheduled or a seeding that I already did. We can see that's checked off here with the done. Um, and I've got a transplanting scheduled for April 15th. What's nice about this now is that this transplanting appears on my to-do list. So if I come back here to the dashboard, there's my, there's my new, uh, transplanting item right there. Transplant 2019 field day broccoli. So when April 15th comes around uh, and I'm and I'm in the greenhouse uh, looking at what I'm supposed to transplant out, I can, if I decide that I'm going to transplant that, I can come in here, check this off, and then just click done. And that will mark the log as done and then it'll be it'll be archived there for the future. If I decide that, oh wait, you know, it's not a great day to transplant, it's raining, um, I can come in here and I can reschedule it. So I can say, okay, I'm gonna bump this ahead uh, to April 17th when it dries up a bit. And now it's there on my to-do list for the 17th. If you have things that were scheduled that you didn't do, they'll appear here under your late tasks. So these, these are pretty simple. It's just, this shows you logs in the future that are not done. And this shows you logs that are in the past that are not done. So you can then reschedule things or move things around uh, however you want. So it's very flexible. It really, it really leaves it up to you to decide how you're, how you're going to be moving around. And it's just kind of a glorified uh, task tracker in a lot of ways. But it really also tries to create this web of relations between all of your activities so that, so that you can get to things easily in the future. Now, say I say I want to in next year, a year goes by and I wanna and I'm like, okay, where did I plant my broccoli last year? You can get to that by a few different ways. You can either come to the areas themselves and you can click on an area. And this will take you to that area record and it'll show you everything that's currently in the area, but it'll also show you things that have been in that area and as well as activities that took place in that area. So you might find it that way, or you can come up to your plantings list and narrow that down to find what you're looking for. So all of these lists have this um, pretty advanced filter and sort options here. So you can narrow down by crop or variety and by location and by season uh, to find the planting that you're looking for or plantings. Or if you're, if you, you know, know that you seeded it during a certain time, you could come and just sort by seedings. So I'll come to my logs and say seedings. This shows all the seedings that I've ever done. Likewise, I can see uh, and this will show you a history of that. Um, so we've got a question here uh, from Krista Alexander says, can the dashboard show the log ID that was created when you first created the seeding or planting so you know which planting or seeding you're looking at for task completion? Because for example, you may have multiple plantings of broccoli in field day and you want to record harvests for specific ones. Yes, so if you're doing, so this really comes down to naming conventions and, and getting into 
you know, patterns for yourself and how you want to name things. But what I would do in that case is in your plantings, rather than naming it 2019 Field A Broccoli, I would name it 2019 Field A Broccoli Succession 1 or, uh, um, you know, uh, planting one or whatever you want to call it so that you've got multiple plantings with different names so that you can tell them apart. And then your seeding log will automatically include that in its name as well. So for example, let's go back to the, let's go back to the planting quick form here. If I'm recording a planting here and I say broccoli, that's the cropper variety. And I'm doing a seeding in a greenhouse. So now if we, if we, and let me add a transplanting suit too, just so we've got that. Um, so now down here, what this is naming, this is going to try to come up with a name for you, for your planting, but you have control here. So you could say, right now it's just going to default to the season, the field, and the crop name. That's kind of the pattern that it uses. But if you wanted to add to this, you could say uh, succession one. And then when you create that, so I'll name this one succession two, actually, just to separate it from the first. Now, when you create that, if I come back to my logs or to my to-do list, now you can see this, succession two. So then it becomes a little bit more valuable. So you can, um, you can get a sense that way. Does that answer your question? Yep, here I am. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, okay, great. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I have a follow-up question. Okay. Um, so I'm interested in that that process being automatic, so I don't have multiple people creating different ways of naming things, and we end up with all kinds of bobbledy glug. <laughs> yeah. But is there a way? Like right now, it takes the defaults and sort of you know concatenates a, a name. Is there? Mm -hmm. I don't know a way. Can you like? Can you preload your crop names and your field names, and maybe you could add your bed numbers or something, so you have Drop down lists. Can you preload those without? Because I know once you've typed it in once, it shows up again. But is there a way to preload a drop down list for those different fields? Ah, uh, yeah. So yes. Um, so in the quick form. So just jumping back. So the the couple of drop downs that you would be presented with is the cropper variety one. That uh, let's see that uh, broccoli. Yeah, so this one, this one will draw from your cropper variety list, which you can get to from uh, assets, plantings, and then crops or varieties. So this, this is kind of your vocabulary of crops or varieties that you have. So you can, you can this is just like the areas list, you can kind of um, add uh, crops or varieties to this. You can arrange them hierarchically so you could have broccoli, but then you could have varieties under that. Um, so it's up to you how you want to structure that. But that's what is used to populate this list here. So just to demonstrate that, say I wanted to do peppers. We have three pepper varieties here. If I start to type pepper, then we'll see those ones start to start to appear there. Um, similarly, with the when we're putting in location, this is just going to pull from the area names that we have on our areas list. So, uh, so in this example, we've got field B and then we've got a bunch of beds in field B. So if I type field B, then we start to see those beds here. So we can, we can put them in that way. So then, um, so now you can see my, now my, my um, asset name starts to become more, more complex. And you need that when you're when you're doing like you said a lot of uh, a lot of plantings of of similar things in successions. Uh, having a good planting name will make it easier for you to get there quickly. And I always like to put the I I kind of chose this as the pattern because I I generally like to have the year first or the season first, so that in the future if I'm looking through crops that uh, if I'm if I'm looking through my archives and I'm seeing crops from different seasons, I can quickly see which one, uh, which season I'm looking at too. 
so Mike, just quickly, if um, say like Krista has a spreadsheet she's already working with that has like her whole list of all her plantings, could she import that and have it auto populate this? So unfortunately we don't have that capability yet. Um, that's something that I wanna add in the future. And uh, what this is all, all this stuff that I'm showing you right now is kind of a, uh, just a first step towards ultimately having a, you know, more of a to do those calculations and, and also think about successions. So if you think about this planting quick form, this is really just for a single planting, but in the future, the, the ideas that we're talking about for the crop planning wizard would be for multiple plantings. So basically you could use that to, to plan out your whole season in a more holistic way. Um, so that's where we're headed with this. It's just, this is where we're at right now. So right now it works great for, um, for recording things when, they, when you actually do them or at the end of the season, things that you actually did. Uh, that's kind of how I recommend using it now. One, one of the things I'm interested in, or we all are to some extent, is traceability. And so yeah, not to have two systems, is there a way, that's what some of my questions are geared towards that, like how can I understand each of these plantings um, with a, you know, a unique way of identifying it um, that I can carry with it through the season and ultimately into my wash pack shed when I'm packaging it up and sending it out. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we've, I've talked a lot with um, Chris Callahan at UVM Extension about this too, because we, we actually worked on the produce safety module together, which you can actually see on this tab here. And that's one of the big, obviously one of the big um, priorities of, of produce safety is the traceability piece. So the goal with FarmOS is really to be able to track from seed to sale. So if we have, um, uh, we have the ability to have sale logs in FarmOS also so that you can, you can say, you know, I sold this, I sold this much of this planting, which then links the, the sale to the planting, which then has additional information on it about when you seeded it and when you did all of your other activities. So yeah, the goal really is to be able to create a model of everything that happens on a farm. Now, a lot of that still requires work to, to enter that data. So what we're, what we're really trying to work on is making that process as smooth and easy as possible by making these kind of quick forms. So if you have ideas, and this goes back to the open source nature of this project, uh, if you have ideas, we have a whole, um, I'll bring up farmless.org, and, and this might be a good place to end it too if we're running out of time. Uh, if you come to the community and contribute page here, we're gonna be, we're gonna be um, we just had a monthly call yesterday uh, to talk about this process, but you know, we get a lot of great ideas from people and we're trying to work on a good way to, to organize all that and funnel it towards a more prioritized roadmaps and that kind of thing. But all of this is being done open and in the public. So if you want to take part in this process of helping to plan or, or think through ideas, or even just if you have an idea and you want to contribute that as an idea, this is a good place to go. This page here, this will show you like where you can where you can submit ideas or bug reports or ask questions. Um, through the VVBGA, you can also just ask me or Becky too, directly, and we can, we can push that through to the right channels within the community also. So yeah, you know, like uh, aside from where the software is right now, we've got big plans for it in the future and we're, we're really kind of excited and optimistic that it will continue to grow and evolve over the next coming years. So it's still pretty, I still consider this, I've been working on it for a couple of years, but I still consider it uh, pretty new um, in a lot of ways and we've got a long way to go but I hope it's useful in even in the form that it's in now. Cool thank you so much Mike that was really helpful and I'm sorry again to everybody um, for getting cut off earlier but um, like Mike said I mean we do have funding for his support for this for three years so either funneling questions through me or um, asking him directly is absolutely fine. This is like a dynamic process and we are hoping to use some of the feedback from you guys to decide how much more we want to invest in this as a group. So um, please keep the feedback coming and any questions or confusions.